Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. What am I think? What am I think? You are listening to Popeye News Links. This is the Admiral Tibet who I represent. And remember, the time is so serious. Contankerous and dangerous. This is Popeye News Links. Conviction has to be quashed before you could have the question of a retrial. But the whole point is, as the, as the judge said, the Court of Appeal is now going to decide if Cartel and his, 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 the other three are going to be tried again. Yeah. In other words, this could, if the Court of Appeal says, yes, there's going to be a retrial, this could start all over again from scratch in the Supreme Court, meaning selection of jurors, me meaning presentation of the evidence, submissions, mm -hmm. everything, a whole, everything that's involved in a new trial. So it's not over oh. yet by a long shot. Mm -hmm. It is obviously a big victory for Cartel and his team because mm -hmm. now they have another shot. But we have to wait for the Court of Appeal to see what it is they're going to decide, if they're going to say this needs to go to a retrial or not. If there's no retrial, then they would go free. But if there is a retrial, then the question is going to be, are they going to get, get out bail. on bail yeah. mm -hmm. or are they going to be held pending the retrial? So there are a lot of issues yet to be decided. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. Now, if you were watching the live stream of the Vibes Cartel and others, judgment earlier today you would have heard me say something at the end when the judgment was handed down i had said that cartel and the others they were free please accept my humble apology i know that a lot of you depend on this channel for credible information and there was no intent to mislead you when i heard the judge said that the conviction was Quashed. I drew a conclusion, but I should have waited before I say anything. We are never too old to learn, and I unreservedly apologize. Once again, my humblest apologies. In this next story, listen to this carefully. I'm not going to call the name of the teenagers involved, but they are both high school students living in the parish of Westmoreland. Well, the 13-year-old female, she has been charged for grievous sexual assault and sexual intercourse with a person under 16 years old. You heard that? A 13-year-old female, she has been charged for grievous sexual assault and sexual intercourse with a person under the age of 16 years old. The male is 14 years old and he has also been charged with the same offenses did you know that a female could be charged for those offenses you didn't well now you know it is said that last month both the 14 year old male and the 13 year old female they met up on a few occasions and do the things everything bust out and the police they got involved as a result, both the 14-year-old boy and the 13-year-old female, they were charged by the police and they are going to be going to the juvenile court shortly. In this next incident, the Hanover police, they have arrested and charged a guy. His name is Cardell James, but he's popularly known as Butty. Butty, he's 33 years old and he's living in the Cove Road area of Hopewell, in the parish of Hanover. We are learning that last week, Thursday, March 7, about some minutes to 3 o'clock, Butty and his 45-year-old brother, who is living in the parish of St. James, they were in the Cove Road area when an argument developed between both of them. It is alleged that Butty, he pulled a gun from a one-strap bag that he had across his chest and pointed it at his brother, threatening to kill him. The brother, he ran out of the yard and subsequently made a report to the police. Earlier this week, the Hanover police, they carried out a raid at Butty's home where he was held. He has since been charged for assault at common law and possession of a prohibited weapon and he'll be going to the courts shortly. In this next story, 
that lady on your screen. Her name is Marie Danes, but she was popularly known as Bumper. Bumper was born on November 26, 1976, 47 years old, and she lived at Cousins Cove in the parish of Hanover. We are learning that Bumper, she was diabetic and hypertensive, and she was taking medication for her illness. Bumper, she was last seen by a close family member on Saturday morning, March 9, about 8 o'clock or thereabouts. On Sunday, the same family member tried communicating with Bumper, but he got no response. On Tuesday night, March 12, about 9 o'clock, the family member went to the home and realized that the kitchen window for the house was opened. The lights in the house were on and the kitchen pipe was running. The family member called out to Bumper but got no response. As a result, the family member then climbed through the kitchen window and went to Bumper's bedroom where he saw Bumper lying on her face with blood all over her face. An alarm was raised and an ambulance was called. Bumper, she was assisted to the Noel Holmes Hospital, where she was admitted. We are told that the police, they were informed, and when they visited Bumper in the hospital, Bumper, she was being treated for wounds to the left side of her face. There were injuries to her left knee, and her left eye was swollen. We are told that when the police visited Bumper's house, blood was seen on the bedroom floor. There were no signs of any forced entry. Early yesterday morning, Wednesday, March 13, about 5 o'clock, Bumper, she died in the Noel Holmes Hospital whilst she was being treated. The police, they are awaiting a post-mortem examination to ascertain the cause of Bumper's death, but it is suspected that Bumper, she was murdered. The question is by who? Was it someone very close to Bumper who killed her? More to come. Also, over in the parish of St. James, the police, they are investigating the death of a lady. Her name is Mrs. Sandra Lee Carth. She was born on June 11, 1947, 76 years old, and she was a retired secretary living in the state of Wisconsin. Mrs. Carth, she arrived in Jamaica a few days ago with other family members to include children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. They were staying at a resort at Rosal in the parish of St. James. We are told that yesterday afternoon, about minutes after 1 o'clock, the family was gathered in the lounge at the hotel. Mrs. Carth, she was sitting in a chair having rum and coke. The other family members, they were going for lunch, but Mrs. Carth, she said that no, she was going to pass on lunch. They left her in the lunch and that was the last time they saw her alive. About minutes after 6 o'clock yesterday evening, Mrs. Carth's 17-year-old great-grandson, he returned to the room where he saw his Great-grandma propped up in the whirlpool jacuzzi on the balcony. She was unresponsive. Her head was above the water, which was neck height, and the water was overflowing from the tub. As a result, the youngster, he called other family members, and they removed Mrs. Carth from the tub and emptied the water. Assistance from the hotel was sought, and the hotel's nurse... She tried to resuscitate Mrs. Carth. We are told that Mrs. Carth, she vomited but she remained unconscious. A doctor was called in and Mrs. Carth, she was pronounced D-E-A-D. -E the police, they were called in and they commenced investigations. It is being suspected that Mrs. Carth, she may have slipped and hit her head while she was getting into the jacuzzi where she stayed until she was discovered by her family members. Sad indeed. This next incident, it took place Tuesday night, 
March 12, about 9.30. It took place at Putan Lane in the Old Ababay area of St. Catherine. We are learning that a policeman in his mid-30s, he was at his home with his fiance feeding chickens when we are told that hoodlums pounced and opened gunfire at the policeman and his fiance. The policeman, he took evasive action and returned the fire. Luckily, a team of police officers were on patrol in the area and they heard the gunshots being fired. We are told that that team of police officers, they hurried to the policeman's yard and they assisted him in challenging the hoodlums who ran away in bushes, making good their escape. When the smoke was cleared, it was discovered that the policeman's fiancé, she was shot. She received gunshot wound to her right leg. She was rushed to a nearby hospital where she was treated and admitted. It is suspected that at least one of the hoodlums was shot because blood spots were seen going into the bushes. The mayhem. Now, in this next incident, in yesterday's video, I carried a story and promised to update it as soon as I get more information. About 7.30 yesterday morning, Wednesday, March 13, residents they stumbled upon the body of two men. They were found along a dirt track near to the Water Commission pumping station along the Don Beholden Main Road in the parish of St. Catherine. We are told that the men's hands and feet were bound. Their necks were partially taken off and they received gunshot wounds to their heads. They also had stab wounds. One of these two men has since been identified. His name is Anthony Chambers. He was a 28-year-old maintenance man. He was contracted to Digicel and he lived at Jones Avenue in the Spanish Town area of St. Catherine. At the time Anthony was found, he was dressed in a blue jeans pants, a multicolored shorts and a grey-looking underpants. He was not wearing any shirt and he was barefooted. The other man is of a dark complexion, about 5 feet 8 inches tall with a low-cut hairstyle. He was dressed in a black jeans pants, orange shorts, red underpants and a pair of black Reebok sneakers. He too was shirtless. We are told at the hoodlums. They used the men's shirt and tied them up. It is suspected that the two men, they were killed elsewhere and dumped near to the pumping station. The mayhem. Now, in this next story, this one took place last night. Wednesday, March 13, about some minutes to 10 o'clock. It took place at Buster Cedar Walk in the Petersfield area of Westmoreland. We are learning that a man, his name is Robert Henry, but he was popularly known as Chubby. Chubby was 57 years old and he was a cane cutter. We are told that Chubby, he is originally from the parish of St. Mary, but for many years, maybe over 20 years, he has been living in the parish of Westmoreland. Chubby was living at Middle Street in the same Bastard Cedar Walk area. What we are told is that Chubby, he was very hardworking, but him love him liquor and it is also said that whenever Chubby was drunk, he was very disrespectful. So persons are wondering if that is the reason why Chubby was targeted. We are told that last night, residents of the Bastard Cedar Walk community, they heard gunshots being fired in the area. Two hoodlums were then seen riding away on a motorcycle. When the residents went and made checks, Chubby, he was seen lying on his back in a pool of blood on the roadway beside his black bicycle. The police, they were called and when they inspected Chubby, he had received gunshot wounds to his head, his chest and his back. He appeared to have died on the spot. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, three 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button 
as yet. If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, if you are over here watching our videos and you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button as also. Hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we drop a new video, you will be one of the first to be notified. In the final story for today, I've carried many stories on this channel about that female on your screen. Her name is Sudin Hilton. The male beside her is 1214. Sudin Hilton, she was facing the court on a murder charge and she was reporting on condition of bail at the Bethel Town Police Station in the parish of Westmoreland. So then, she was charged for murder after she was implicated in the murder of that guy on your screen. His name is Richard Baker, but he was popularly known as Jimmy. It is said that Sudin, she was the getaway driver when hoodlums killed Jimmy. It is also said that Sudin, she was the one who set up Jimmy. Now, tomorrow, I'm going to be giving you much more details but Sudin, she was once reporting on condition of bail at the Ramble Police Station in the parish of Hanover. She had gone to the station to report on Thursday, December 9, 2021 and when she was leaving in a motor vehicle, hoodlums shut up the car she was traveling in. That's the time I put out the video with that thumbnail and asked if Sudin and 1214 are marked. Well, a few hours ago, Sudin, she was shot and killed at New Roads in the parish of Westmoreland where she was residing. Tomorrow, I'm going to be giving you the full details of how Sudin was killed. But it is confirmed that Sudin, she was shot and killed by hoodlums. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa in News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick silver sin. If we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. Don't you be a bit me here, them a murder 